In this video, I'll show you how to preload the spindle bearings on the Grizzly G3616 mill. You'll need some tools. You'll need a, um, a dial indicator. You'll need um, a hefty screwdriver. Flashlight would help a lot. And um, you always need a hammer. Doesn't have to be a brass hammer. It depends on how much you want to beat up your screwdriver. If you have a G3616 or, or, or a um, 3617, you'll notice this um, this cover that says spindle adjustment hole. Now hopefully you'll never have to take this cover off and adjust that spindle. But if you do, you just unscrew it with a Phillips screwdriver and then you can look in there and see the spindle. Now you're looking at the uh, at the quill and notice as I perform a down feed that you can see a mechanism in there. Let me lock the quill and I will uh, shed some light on the subject. This is the uh, top of the uh, spindle and you can see that, maybe you can see that, um, nut and beneath that nut is a, um, a washer with tabs on it and uh, you need, at least one of those tabs will be bent up into into a space on that nut, that's that shiny part to the left, that's the space you can see and uh, you need to bend that down and I use that hefty screwdriver you saw earlier to bend it down and then the procedure to tighten it is um, to uh, stick your hefty screwdriver is to stick your hefty screwdriver in that uh, in that space that I showed you, in that uh, gap, that uh, uh, I don't know what, what would you call it, the appropriate place on that nut, and then to uh, gently tap that uh, that spanner nut uh, to tighten up the uh, to tighten it up, and what that'll do is suck those uh, bearings up and uh, give them a certain amount of preload. Grizzly recommends that uh, you tighten it up to um, where do you have about a half a thousandth, five ten thousandths of an inch uh, play down here in the, um, in, the, in the spindle. Now mine currently has a lot more than that. You can hear it. Here it rattled the, uh, the spindle moving back and forth in the quill. It's about eight thousandths. I've only taken about a thousandth out so far. So we're going to see how this works out. I'm going to uh, take a little more out and I'll show you the procedure from afar kind of and over my shoulder as I do it. Now you're going to have to put up with me getting in the way and you won't be able to see in detail but you'll see that I'm going to stick this hefty screwdriver into the uh, spindle adjustment hole and gently tighten that spanner up. How much do you tighten it? I don't know. I won't know until I finish this process, which involves tightening 
raising the quill, at least I'm raising the, uh, the spindle, I mean, and um, checking again with the old um, dial indicator. Set so, it so on zero just for, it doesn't have to be, I mean, it can be set anywhere, because I just, I just want to see how many thousands I've got to go. Okay. I may have tightened it up uh, a thousandths. It was at eight thousandths. Now it's at seven. So we'll repeat the process. Bring it down until I can see the spanner nut. Adjust it so I'll have the good angle on that uh, gap to peck on. I may have turned it a total of uh, a quarter turn. Test it again. We're at uh, six thousandths. So I believe I'm doing something. We'll do one more iteration of this on camera, in case you missed any of the weird details. Grizzly G3616 or G3617. Uh, it's an excellent mill. It's a great beginner's mill and, uh, and I don't, do not regret buying it at all. This is, uh, I bought it in uh, 2007. This is 2015. So it's done everything I wanted it to do, and I've learned a tremendous amount. One thing I learned was to uh, make sure the collets are tightened up so you don't spin one and raise a burr up in your quill, which occasioned the need for a, uh, I mean, raise a burr up in the spindle, which occasioned the need for a new uh, spindle in my case. We could probably could have fixed the old one, but the labor was uh, uh, amounted to more than the $156 uh, they charged me for a spindle. Okay, we're at uh, five thousandths. So things are looking up. I'll take it off camera and uh, and bring and come back in, in a little bit. I'm checking the uh, the uh, play in this in the uh, spindle again, one of about 50 times, and uh, I'm down to about three thousandths. Moving the spindle back and forth in the quill, I can see three. It read three thousandths. So it's a definite improvement, but we have to go down to about um, five ten thousandths and then um, run the bearings in, break them in according to the Grizzly manual, which is a long process. It's uh, ten minutes at every speed and there's uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, uh, eight, nine speeds, so you figure, you do the math. And um, 
I'm all, while I'm checking this, I'm also turning it by hand just to, just to see if, if maybe that last little bit was just too much tightening. If it, if it was, and if, it, if I did tighten it too much, which I don't know if you can, um, and it, it felt uh, different in my experience using this mill than it usually does, then um, if it was not, if it was too much, I would have to back it out and uh, hopefully um, it would be five ten thousandths um, play in it or less. Um, if that was not the case, I don't, I don't know what the answer would be. I've got it down to two thousandths. And it really didn't take 50 turns to get it this far. I probably 50 turns of that, uh, 50 not turns, but 50 uh, adjustments of that spanner nut, and it's still nice and loose. That squeak is uh, from the uh, pulley arrangement, I believe. It's always been there. I'm down to within one and a half thousandths. Grizzly says at five ten thousandths, uh, start turning the spanner nut uh, approximately one thirty second of an inch. I'm going to start doing that at this point because I can feel the uh, spindle uh, tightening up a bit, um, which it, you know, it would uh, probably normally do um, with new bearings until you broke them in. That's my theory anyway. I'm going to tap it exactly one thirty second of a turn. That was a precise one thirty second of a turn. And uh, now I will set up to measure it. Let's see what we get here. Get it on zero. No real reason to set it on zero. I'd like to do it. Okay, we have one and a half thousands. Really, that didn't do anything. So I'm going to go through several more iterations of one thirty second of a turn until I get it at something less than one thousandth of an inch. At this point I've gone through several iterations of, of tapping that spanner nut, tightening it up, um, loading the bearings in the spindle uh, bit by bit. I started off with nine thousandths and um, following uh, Grizzly's uh, advice, recommendations, guidance, instructions, I'm, I've got it down to uh, uh, five ten thousandths, I believe. The spindle is, uh, is not locked and I can move it by hand, maybe a thousandths, but upon locking the spindle, which is where it'll be when you cut, I'm less than half a thousandths. And that is what Grizzly recommends. So now it's time to go through that long uh, spindle bearing break-in process. I'm breaking in the spindle bearings by running uh, the mill in each speed, there's nine of them, for ten minutes. After each ten minute period I'll check the, that quill to see if it's warmed up any um, in the bottom of the spindle. That will give me some 
indication that it may be too tight. So I'm going to run through the um, the lower speeds in this step pulley uh, mill, and then I'll run through all the um, medium range speeds, and then I'll run through the uh, high end speeds. Actually, there's And then on, there's four four speed ranges with uh, three speeds each. So then I'll run through the medium high uh, range speeds and then the high speeds. It's going to be boring, so we'll turn the camera on.